Well, good morning. Welcome, church. It's like the sign says. How's your summer going so far? Good, good, good. It's all right, Miss Peggy, you come right through. How's the going, Jerry? What? How's going? Yeah, it's great. It's great. We're going to try to get down by the ocean there in a couple more weeks. We've been up inside all summer, so... Yeah, but Marcia, she's really excited about going back to school in September, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably about as much excited as the kids are, but it, it's good. Yeah, it's funny how our lives go through tr transitions, eh? And I was talking to Lori outside of his summer home in Yarmouth and, uh, and how he'll go down there for a couple of days. But it's just uh, to answer your question, Jim, it's uh, aren't we blessed to have little places like that where we can go? And, uh, you know, I... I you feel so close to God down there. I, and I might have told you folks this, maybe, or you might have saw, we went around the Cabot Trail. How many of you have been around that? Amen. Boy, I tell you, if that don't amaze you about this earth that God created, eh? Like way, way up, and the way the ocean touches the land and all those mountains, and uh, you just catch yourself wondering, you know, how when, you know, on the, the, when he created these things, and you're standing there taking it all in from thousands of feet up in the air, and listen to people give it, put it in perspective that are looking down for the first time. It's just amazing. But just as amazing as our relationship with God. Um, you know, I was talking with my friend down back. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to put her on the spot. But um, we were talking about a relationship, your relationship with God and, um, and um, promises. And, and um, it got me thinking as she was talking and I was listening and I was talking um, <laughs> how, um, how wonderful it is that God, through Jesus, gives us the opportunity to have a relationship with him. And how I need to be reminded that he doesn't promise us things in the Bible, easy life, and other things that we always think that we should have and wonder why we don't and get at the end of our week and wonder why things were so hard and maybe forget to thank him when things were good. Um, but what a wonderful opportunity it is to come to him. To come to him in prayer, to welcome him when we wake up in the morning on our bed, um, to welcome him here this morning when we come to worship. You know, sometimes I forget to do that when I check myself at the door, Father. Create in me a heart that's willing to receive and listen for your voice here this morning through the message and through the songs. And, and uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. So many things going through your head here this morning. And how are you guys doing down there by the doorway? We've got to get the engineers in. That door frame is just a little creak in one way, so if you see people leaning against it, that's why. <laughs> anyway, I want to welcome you. I, I don't, if it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here for a while, welcome. <laughs> Keep coming. And, uh, I, and I'm excited for the fall. You know, we've got, we're got we got to get these young people down from up on the hill for some more hot dogs in September. Get youth groups started up again. Get some small groups going. Hopefully you guys can all take part in small groups. One of the things I wanted to ask, because I forgot to get Pastor Rob to give me some time to mention it. If it's on your heart to help out uh, in regards to youth or young families with Discover or things like that, like the nursery, um, just come see me or let me know. Um, we do need some volunteers to help out on Sunday mornings with those two programs. And um, we really want to draw young families into our church family, which you know would be, are critical. And uh, so with your help, if you think you have that gift, even sometimes in, as a helper in the Sunday school, it's just being there to be with the teacher and to go get things that she may need or he or she may need. So it's not really anything to do with teaching. So anyway, come see me if you think you might have a gift for something like that. Anyway, let's get ready to worship God and pray. Let's come to worship. Father, we just, um, we just bring our... We bring ourselves to you here in this place this morning. Just as we are, you made each and every one of us individually. You, you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. And, uh, and there's no mistaking for all of us to be here this morning. So because we are here and because we decided to come and worship you in this place with our fa church family, open our minds, open our eyes. May we feel and see you and sing praises to you and apply the words that we hear to our hearts as we live more for you. And I ask, Father, through, through your Son, encourage me and all of my friends here today to have a closer, tighter relationship with you 
to come quicker to you, to know that we need you. Without you, we just can't do the things we need to do. But with you, with you, all things are possible. And we, we need to be reminding ourselves of that. So just be here in this place this morning. What a wonderful opportunity it is to be here and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Derek. Well, tomorrow is a pretty important day to this church, uh, critically. Uh, it's Rob's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> so we're going to sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Looks pretty good for a 68, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. We will worship. 
Notice we got a new piano up on the platform. So the furniture's gone. Now we got a little lightweight one. So we're working out the bugs. So be patient with us, yeah. I don't know how you knew about my birthday. So. Must have been a big bird that told you. And uh, Dale, we can see you now. I can see Dale. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you're hidden behind the big piano, but we can see you now. I uh, want to let you folks know, most would, but perhaps some don't, but we do want to be keep in prayer uh, Reverend Dr. John Bartol. He's down at the Dartmouth General Hospital. He went down to visit his... Uh, uh, daughter there this past week and then had one of his breathing spells so he's in the hospital uh, down there and so we want to keep him him in prayer and we'll certainly be uh, staying close contact with him during this time um, and of course yeah we want to pray for our kids and children and and uh, fall programming is kind of in the works as we uh, iron some things out so let's take a moment in prayer shall we Uh, Lord, we come here today, and we need your help. We need your grace. Uh, we need you in our lives. And maybe for some of us coming in here this morning, uh, a relationship with you is a new thing. For some of us, it's, we've been walking with you for years. Maybe some of us are a little bit uh, timid and perhaps, I don't know, it's a bit scary being in church. Uh, Lord, I pray that your grace and your peace and your mercy and your love and your compassion would just fill the room. 
Lord, we ask that your presence would be with us uh, to help us, to convict us, to transform us, to, to, to speak softly with us. And Lord, I do pray, as we sang earlier, that we would keep in step, step by step with you. Uh, Lord, thank you for being a God who loves us. Thank you for being a God who gave his one and only son to save people like us. Uh, Lord, we do, I think of uh, Guinevere as I walked here this morning, I want to pray for her as she'll soon be heading off to nursery and uh, uh, whatever little ones I might have missed as I was coming in. But Lord, we want to pray for the high school. We continue to do our prayer walking every Wednesday around the high school. We thank you for Kay and those who have been going out, and we, we pray for all the students there. It's a hard time of life being a teenager any, for any of us at any time in our lives, but uh, this, this day and age is hard, and so we pray for them. And uh, Lord, thank you for your grace in our lives. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We want to say a special prayer as well for... Uh, Dr. John, at this time, we pray you'd heal his body. Uh, we pray that he'd find comfort and, and peace knowing that you're there with him. We thank you for uh, his children who are, who are with him as well. And uh, Lord, give the, the nurses and doctors wisdom. I know he's been through a number of different tests and uh, kind of jokingly said, I'm not as healthy as I thought I was, <laughs> but uh, 94 uh, and still concerned about who's going to get to church this morning. So... <laughs> Uh, we lift him up to you. Uh, Lord, I thank you for all retired ministers in our midst here this morning, uh, for everyone here, for everybody from the leadership board to the deacons, everybody who serves. Uh, Lord, we pray that this would become a strong and continue to be a strong hold for you in our community. As new people come, Lord, we pray that they would find the hope found in Jesus and join us in fellowship here at Windsor Baptist. And Lord, help us to do everything we can to be welcoming and loving and gracious to a world that's looking for, for truth and for peace and in, in many ways some sense of sanity. Uh, Lord, may they see Jesus in us. In your name we pray, amen. Now we've got the scripture reading. Judy, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll put this down a bit. <laughs> I'm reading from the Living Bible, uh, second chapter of Timothy, verses, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and 10 to 17. God is good, isn't he? He's really good to us. <clears throat> you may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last days it is going to be very difficult to be to be a Christian, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be hard-headed and never give in to others. They will be constant liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immortality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will betray their friends, they will be hot-headed, puffed up with pride, and prefer good times to worshiping God. They will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by people like that. But you know from watching me that I am th that kind of person. I am not that kind of person. You know what I believe and the way I live and what I want you to know, my faith in Christ and how I have suffered. You know my love for you and my patience. You know how many troubles I've had as a result of my preaching the good news. You know about all that was done to me while I was visiting in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. But the Lord delivered me. Yes, and those decide to please God, Jesus Christ, by giving godly lives with suffer at the hands of those who hate him. In fact, even men and false teachings will become worse and worse, deceiving many, they themselves having been deceived by Satan. But you must keep on believing the things you have been taught, 
You know they are true, for you know that you can trust those of us who have taught you. You know how when you were a small child, you were taught the Holy Scriptures, and it is these that make you wise to accept God's salvation by trusting in Christ Jesus. The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God and is useful to teach what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us to do what is right. It is God's way of making us well prepared at every point, fully equipped to do good to everyone. Bless the words of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Get some paper out of the way here. Jesus, how I trust Him, how I pray. 
just the ladies. Oh. Well, thank you. Not too many kinks. The kinks were okay. Did pretty good. It's hard when you get a whole new instrument plugged into the system. Right, so, uh, God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's a question that uh, I know you've probably asked, uh, you will ask. I would encourage you actually to ask the question. It's a good question to ask instead of just doing what you want to do. But God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And, and that's just a posture of surrender that says, God, I surrender to you, and I'll do whatever you ask. You take the lead, and I'll follow. So if you're at the beginning part of life or somewhere in the beginning, you might be asking, hey, God, what do you want me to do with my life? If you're near the end, maybe in retirement, I know some of you are, you might be thinking, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do for the remaining years that I have? Great question. Probably the biggest one you'll ever ask. It's a purpose question. And to get to the answer for you, because God has different answers for all of us, He made us different and diverse, uh, there's a couple things you need to appreciate and work on uh, to know. So th today is part two. Last week uh, was part one, if you want to check it out on YouTube, so I'm building on that. And last week we established that if you want to know what God wants you to do, you got to know God. <laughs> Kind of a precursor, like a 101, but you need to know Him. And so the, the intimacy level in your relationship with Him is really important. If you've got deaf ears, it's hard to hear His voice. If you're in rebellion, it's hard to hear His voice. If you don't even know Him, how can you even know what He wants from you? So you need to know Him. 
Then based on that relationship, you need to know what God's really after in your walk with Him. One of the things He tells us all through the Bible in your relationship with Him is He's after your transformation. So it's not so much the things you do. Some people can get really focused on that. I know some women and some men, like, what do I do here? <laughs> and uh, we, we went to that passage in Thessalonians where God said, His will for you actually is that you develop a pure heart. His will for you is that you, uh, somebody who was once blind can then see. Somebody who is a sinner becomes a saint. He's, he's after this thing called redemption and renewing who you are. And sometimes that means it gets you to sit in really uncomfortable and really hard places because he's, he's all about transforming your heart. And so you'll find yourself in challenging situations, you'll find yourselves in trials and testing because he, he's all after changing you to become the best version of who he made you to be, which is ultimately you made in his image, he wants you to become more like the Jesus that you're following. That's a hard pill to swallow because it's all about character, it's all about integrity, it's all about behavior and how you live, and, and that gets, that's, that's hard stuff. Right now, so today, if we want to know God's will for our lives, there's a few things we need to talk about this week and next, and, and I'll set it up this way. Remember, God is in a relationship with you through faith in Christ. Everything we're talking about here, think of a relationship, not a not so much a cold and black manual, white and black manual, or a to-do list from your boss. Boy, God's just, a, you know, he's, he's kind of bossy. Or a, or a productivity sheet from the sales department you're working for, or an, an efficiency assessment from Nova Scotia Power. <laughs> the, the, the whole thing here that we're talking about, God, what do you want me to do, that does relate into, into the things He might want us to do physically, uh, is all about in the context of a relationship. So think, think father and son, think uh, mom and daughter, think, uh, think best friends as we're walking through some of these things. Meaning you're not a robot. He could have just made a bunch of robots. The Bible would look a lot differently. You get a couple chapters in, I'll tell you they're not robots, they're doing things he told them not to do, right? You have choices. You can make a choice. You can choose to follow or not, and those choices have consequences. And I say that because I want to put two um, alternative images in your mind this morning. Yeah, Ella did a great job on that. <laughs> Dancing versus wrestling. I was trying to figure out how to, how to convey this today, but on the, uh, well, the, my left, it's still be your left, I think. <laughs> yeah. A man and a woman dancing. On the right, there's two guys wrestling. Just for today, I want you to think of your relationship with God like a dance. His intention is that it's more like a dance than a wrestling match. In a dance, someone leads, usually the man, and the other follows, usually the woman. And when dancing, the lead provides the direction, plans ahead. He's kind of like the organizer of the dance and has control over the structure and the spacing and the timing and the pace decides on the movement based on the space available in the room, trying not to bump into the other dancers that might be there. The one following responds to the lead and interprets his movements. He has to be a good listener, not disrupt the plan. And as the follow, have patience and skill because she gives the control to the lead, but doesn't mean she's passive. She has more freedom to express herself in dance because she's in the flow of the music doesn't have to worry about what comes next, so she just follows the lead. And it's a beautiful picture. You ever see two people dancing who know what they're doing? It's, it's wonderful. It's magnificent. Friends, discovering God's will for your life and mine, finding His direction, is like the lead and follow of dancers. It's a very beautiful thing. You're the follow and must know the lead and respond to Him. And when you do, your life turns into a beautiful, intimate dance walk with God. It's uh, you're, like you're in sync with the music, with the rhythm, the way He made things, the way He designed you to be. You're engaged, you're in harmony, and, and people will describe it as just feeling alive when they start to follow Jesus and surrender to Him. Not that it isn't easy all the time, sometimes life gets harder, but at least you're at peace with the one who made you. There's a, there's a passion and a peace that all comes together. 
And then there's wrestling, <laughs> right? There's the, uh, I'm going to do this my own way. God, I know you said for me to do this, but eh, I'd prefer to do that. And I'm going to go there. I'm going to be in this relationship and go here and buy that and whatever I want regardless of what God says. Because you don't have to follow the lead. Remember I said, God didn't make robots. You can say, whatever with that, I'm going to do my own thing. But if you don't follow and submit to the lead and His teachings, because Jesus is a real, He's just describing reality and how He's made us to be. We can follow the design God made or not, but when you don't, it winds up becoming like a very painful wrestling match. You get sweaty, you get tired, lying on a mat, and perhaps waking up one night and wondering, how did life turn into this? What have I become? Where have I gone? What, why am I even here? What happened to my life? And I would suggest to you, it's much easier to follow God instead of fight with Him. A lot easier. Now, look, God loves a wrestler. <laughs> uh, Jacob wrestled with God. He welcomes wrestlers. He can handle you. He can handle all of us, even as strong as you might think. I remember one time, I was, actually, I was at New Minus Baptist Church, and it was a leadership meeting for our association. We have to meet to do, a, do up association licenses and, and, and interview the candidates. Um, and we were sitting in this one room, and there was a room kind of down the hall a little bit, and there was a lot of banging and thumping around going on there. Somebody said, boy... In a church, I wonder what's going on there. I kind of tongue-in-cheek said, I think it's a pastoral counseling session. Uh, you know, Jacob wrestled with God. He did have to walk with a limp the rest of his life as a reminder to stop walking in his own strength and start just following God. My point is wrestling with God doesn't have to be that way. It's much easier to just keep in step with the Spirit instead of going down the path that the Pharisees did where they got stiff-necked. That's what Jesus describes. The way. There's, a, there's, a, there's a stubbornness. There's a refusal to just bend and mold with the potter who wants to make his clay into something beautiful. Now, look, I don't dance. Uh, Jerry, don't have to laugh that hard. Uh, uh, Melissa loves to dance. She's always trying. My wife, she's always trying to get me to dance. There's some dancing classes happening this fall, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Anyhow, pray for me. I, I'm told it's really good for you. It's good for your brain, and it's healthy. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt. Um, but, I, but on a spiritual way, I've been walking with God long enough to realize that life is much better, so much better, if you just follow His lead. It really is. Uh, to do that, you need to learn to listen and surrender and ask for help and be dependent and trust and wait and everything our culture tells you not to do. Our culture says be faster, it says be independent, it says you need to uh, be strong and, you know, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps and, and, and be independent, all that kind of stuff. And then you come to Jesus and it's like, it's a complete reversal. And going through that change can be hard. Fighting, kicking, and screaming as God is just wrapping His arms of love around you. No wonder there is so much pain and tears and crying and death in our world. It's full of sin. And by that I mean people not living in harmony with God and the way He designed life to be. So I want to focus on three things this week. We'll build on them next week. So kind of a little three-part series before we get into the fall. To help you dance better and wrestle less. And I did get the concepts from a book on God's will I have, but I've adapted them quite a bit just to be transparent. Um, sort of his, but not really anymore. <laughs> Regardless, these are to help you hear God's voice, His music, and to live more harmoniously with Him. Because at the end of the day, what God wants you to do is the most important thing. But when you die and give an account, it's not going to be your mother there, it's not going to be your spouse there, it's not going to be your child there, it's not going to be your dad there, it's going to be Jesus there. 
So his opinion is the most important thing. So here we go. How to keep in step with God first. It's a big one, and, and it really is step one. Read and apply the Bible to your life. And I, I'd ask you to appreciate the order that I'm going in here this morning, the order that I'm going. There's a bunch of things that are going to kind of come together. You want to know what God wants you to do, but first on the list of knowing God's will for your life and what He wants you is knowing the Bible, reading it and studying it and applying it to your life. Uh, Judy read it earlier, a bit of a different translation that was on the screen, but we, kind of, we followed along. Uh, here's the big verse on that, so you know I'm not making this up. All Scripture is God-breathed, and listen to the list that Paul gives off here, and is useful for teaching and rebuking and correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, meaning to do that which God is calling them to do. You need the Scriptures. And you'll notice at the top, it said that Scripture is God-breathed. It's what we call inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, meaning God breathed life into it. God inspired people to write the Scriptures. They are from God to us through them. I've heard this online. I've heard this to people in the church sometimes, too. The Bible is just written by a bunch of old guys a couple thousand years ago didn't know anything. That's, that's, it, it, and I would just uh, correctly nudge you a bit there and say, no, it was written by, by men years ago, but they were inspired by the Holy Spirit when they wrote. They are God's words to us through them. His words written in real time that reveal His will. And in different generations to different people, and you can follow it from Genesis to Revelation, uh, there's a number of things that are consistent that we can learn from. The Scriptures are and have been the foundation for faith and conduct in the Christian life and the church for millennia, and they continue to be even today. They will teach you the way to go. They'll rebuke you even. I've had that experience against going down the wrong way. They'll correct you as you start to veer off and ultimately train. That's like, that's like, like if you're uh, training for the Olympics, that's an athletic imagery where you're uh, learning and growing in your faith like an athlete to do what God wants you to do. So if, as a Christian, if you want to know God's will, go to the Bible. It was written down. He doesn't have to say it 50,000 more times. He's already said it a couple times in Scripture. It applies today. So the question I have to ask myself as I go to it is, does what I am doing or you, do, you are doing or thinking of doing, does that line up with what God has already said? And I always go back to, a, I got into a bit of a heated debate years ago when I was in college. We were debating over a very controversial topic. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I won't even know what it is, but it's now that I said that. Um, but I had a position, and he had a position, and we were going at it. And then he kind of laid down the trump card, and I thought, you arrogant, but you're so true. He said, I'm getting all my answers from Scripture. I'm trying to discern what God wants. You're just making stuff up on the fly. I thought, okay, that was kind of rude. Maybe you're right. <laughs> but he had a point. Your thoughts and ideas, where are they coming from? Who do they originate from? Are they coming from God? Are they consistent with Scripture? Or are they not? It's something worth asking. So please read your Bible, and for all of us, it's important to apply what we read. No sense in having a treadmill at home if it's not plugged in and you're using it, right? You got to apply it. And if you don't have a Bible, let the church office know, we'll get you one. I actually printed off uh, 20 copies this morning. I've done it on more than one occasion now. It's a two-year Bible reading plan as you leave. I, there's some copies there. I've always found the one-year one kind of a bit intense. I'm a minister. <laughs> I do this professionally. Even I find the one-year one a bit, a bit much. So it's a two-year plan. It'll bring you through the Psalms twice. Uh, we've done this another occasion, my time here in the church, but helpful thing to have in 
and uh, you can use that if you want. If you don't have a Bible, let us know. And I will say, if you're new to the Bible or can feel a bit intimidating, a few years back we went through something called The Story, and it's a very helpful book. It's about 30-plus chapters of taking certain scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, just bringing them together. It's all scripture, bringing it together in an easy way to read to get the big plan of the Bible. And um, I loved it. Somebody who went to seminary, I thought, I wish I had it when I was there. Very helpful book. If you don't have them, we can get one for you. Uh, if you want to know the scriptures, I want to help you do that. So if it can feel a little bit intimidating to pick up the big Bible that's got some over a thousand pages in it, uh, this is a good uh, step one that might help you along. And I found this quote, the wise scripture reads scripture, meditates on it, and puts it into practice. It's what David was doing millennia ago. Paul knew them well. Jesus knew the scriptures very well. They are essential to understanding God's will. And a beautiful psalm to read about that is Psalm 119. I do want to mention prayer here for a moment as you're discerning God's will. Uh, a prayer is you and I either together or alone communicating with God. And as you read the Bible, pray. It's, it's a practice I, that I do. With, um, you pray over verses. You pray about your life when you encounter certain verses. Because the Bible can help you to pray and discern whether your prayers are in line with God's will or not. I'll throw some grenades out there, but you might think, I prayed the other day, and I'm pretty sure God wants me to get a divorce. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's, there, there's some criteria in Scripture, where, oh, but my point is this, go to the Bible first. What does God say about that? Or, I prayed the other day, and I, yeah, I really don't need to go to church, I can just pray at home. Okay. What do the Scriptures say about Christians getting together? There's a number of verses on that. Uh, or I prayed the other day and I don't think what they're doing is sin. Okay, but what's God's, what's God's opinion on that lifestyle, that behavior? Bottom line, do your desires align with Scripture, which is God breathed, or does it not? So I would just say, too, it's important for all of us, including the minister, to be more reflective in our life and less reactive. Be more reflective unless sometimes we just keep doing something or we react to something. And you got to think, what, what does God want me to do? What does God think about what I'm doing and, and how I'm living right now? Just be more reflective. And that's, we, you know, when Jesus tells us to have the, the Lord's Supper, to remember Him, that's, we, we, we think about what, how we're living and, and, uh, and what we're doing. And is this, is this honoring to God? Is it not? And I think you'll find you'll have a better dance with Him as you approach life that way, every day reading some scripture and praying and letting it take hold of you. Even if you've been a Christian for a while, I've seen Christians who've been Christians for decades and sort of kind of start to go down a really different path. And it doesn't take long as I'm talking to them, I find out there's no devotional life. There's, no, there's nothing correcting or, or, or rebuking or kind of training them in any way. We all need it. Even myself, I'm preaching to myself here uh, this morning. So the first step for the Christian is to go to the Bible. And I'm going to say something big right now. <laughs> I'm going to humble myself. Go to the Bible before you go to a minister. What? Well, um, ministers get things wrong. <laughs> uh, we're not popes. We are told in Scripture that there is such a thing as false prophets and false teachers. Go to the, remember that I said there's an order to this as we're discerning God's will. Make sure you go to the Scriptures first. Because if you ever sit down and meet with me and ask me questions, one of the things that I'm doing in my head and my heart is I'm, I'm going through a list of what I know from the Bible. Because all I'm trying to do is be a messenger or a spokesperson for God. So if you ever meet, that's what I'm trying to do, and my, my sinful heart can get in the way, but I'm, it takes work daily, but that's, that's, that's all I'm trying to do. Go to the Word of God first. 
So the Bible. If you want to know what God wants to do with your life, here's something else. You're going to have to exercise your heart. Develop a heart for God. So, you've got a relationship with God, you've gone to His Word. What you also want to be doing is, is developing a heart for Him. What I mean by that is there are certain exercises that you and I can do that keep our heart soft and tender to the Spirit's voice. Praying regularly, doing daily devotions, attending church, giving generously to ministry, fasting, giving to the poor, serving God's people using your gifts, listening to other Christians, you're developing a heart for God. It doesn't just happen. Like, you got to go to the, the church gym. <laughs> That's a, I came out on the fly. You know, but you need to work on your heart. And here's a beautiful verse, by the way. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. I love that verse. I've got it underlined in my Bible. What a beautiful promise. And what I'm after there is the first part. You know, delight yourself in the Lord, feast on the Lord, drink from His cup, eat at His table, enjoy, enjoy His presence. Spend time with Him and His people because He lives in His people. Let your heart and, and His heart become one. You might say, well, how? Well, I just talked about it. It's spiritual old-fashioned stuff that a number of us know. Some of us don't. But you get engaged with God, where He's at work and what He's doing, and when you spend more time with Him, you literally start to experience more of God and come to know what He wants more readily. You're on the same page as Him. See, He's not a dictator or a tyrant or some kind of oppressive religious monster. Read that verse. God actually wants to give you the desires of your heart. The problem is the heart is prone to wander. Lord, help me. But there's a number of promises in Scripture. Ask and you'll receive. And did you know that there's times as a pastor and even as a dad when I want to I do things or give things to the church or to my kids, but I can't because people's hearts are in the wrong place? God's not interested in blessing the devil's work, but He loves blessing His people who are trying to follow Him. He'll give you everything you need if you try to follow Him. Matthew 6.33, He promises that in Scripture. You know, and at times I think I love you, but I can't support that. I want to bless you, but you won't let me. And I do the same thing with God sometimes as well. Developing a heart for God means stepping out in faith. And for some of us, might even mean some life changes. And some of the people around you might not like it, but it's what God is calling you to do. And also, you and I have one life to live. Work on your heart, less on your house. Nothing wrong with having a house. I love working on my house. But work more on your heart and less on bingo. Like, it's a priority thing, okay? It's about priorities. Loving God is first. Take care of your heart. One of the problems the church, I think, is having is we haven't taken care of our own hearts inside, then we go out there and try to fix everybody else's, and we just made a mess of things because we didn't take time to work on ourselves. Okay, last thing I want to talk about this morning, another important one. These things all kind of come together. God, what do you want me to do? Go seek some wise counsel. So this is where you go to the minister. <laughs> Depends if he's wise or not. Maybe you don't want to talk to me. But this is where you go to some minister, okay? <laughs> uh, or somebody who knows the thing that you're talking about, that you need, you need wisdom on. You've got a relationship with him. You've gone to the Scriptures. You're working on your heart to be more in line with God, you know, asking for help, confessing sins. The Bible tells us, and again, the chronology, to seek wise counsel. So if things are still gray, sometimes there can be some gray issues with Scripture too. This is the point where you can come and talk to somebody who knows more than you do. 
or can identify a good person to go to. Two quick verses on that. There's a bunch of them, especially in Proverbs. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. There's another one. The, fool, the way of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice. That's a, that's a true statement. <laughs> fools can be the most stubborn, you know. We have them, we have them in our family, we work with them. If you don't, if you don't know them, it might be you, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> wise people tend to listen more and speak less. They listen more and they speak less. Uh, last week I talked about sitting down at Arby's with my pastor at the time, discerning whether I should go into ministry. That's what I was doing. I wanted to talk to somebody who got into ministry, who knew what it was like, and he, he could walk me through some of that. I was seeking wise counsel. And I'll, I'll underline the word wise there. There's a lot of counsel out there today. It's not necessarily wise. It's not necessarily God-fearing. It's not necessarily helpful or edifying. It's counsel, but it's just an opinion. There's all kinds of this on the news and online and on TV. There's a lot of talking heads. Seek wise counsel. Avoid the temptation to just talk to people who already agree with you and will just affirm what you want to hear. Uh, right now, I'm working with somebody uh, the Lord brought into my life who's seeking some truth, and he's not getting that from other denominations that he's been a part of. For some reason, he's in my life, and he's asked me all these very difficult questions. He's just after, he's after truth. But in all of this, what it is about is listening and slowing down, less reacting, more reflecting, right? You're doing your homework, you're searching things out, you're seeking. It can take work on our part. And I'll say, too, there are very good Christian counselors out there. There are Christian business people out there, if you think of starting a company. But seek wise counsel. I'll build on these next week, but I think that's good for today. So, God, what do you want me to do? Go to your Bible, work on your heart, and seek wise counsel. Those are three steps that you get on the right path, and more in step with God's dance for your life. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you today. I thank you for everyone here. Whatever I said, God, that, that was just off, I pray you'd burn it up. I pray that the truth would land deep in our hearts. Uh, Lord, I pray that my words and the meditation of our hearts together were pleasing in your sight. Lord, I pray that for everyone in here today, and if somebody's seeking, you know, what should I do? How should I live? Where should I go? Lord, I pray that you would speak to them. Lord, I thank you for the Bible. Uh, I thank you for the, the church and, and for your Holy Spirit and for people in our lives that are right there, but maybe we don't want to ask for help, and yet they're right there. Lord, I thank you for, when I pray that prayer, I think of those of us who, who struggle with certain levels of mental health. I thank you for therapists and counselors that are out there as well. Uh, Lord, if we're struggling with depression, help us to reach out uh, to people who know how to help. Uh, Lord, we come before you today, we surrender ourselves to you, and I would simply ask too, God, what do you want to do with our church? Where do you want us to go? What do you want us to look like? How do you want us to change, perhaps? Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. I surrender myself to you. And we ask that you would have your way with us. In the precious, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Ross. Everyone like to stand? We're going to finish with On My Way to Heaven.
sorrows and frowns may pass my head. But I pay no attention, drop the contention, had no time to stray. Problems weigh me down to my sunny sky. you. I, uh, although I'm, I'm, I'm trying to avoid sweets, so it's getting sweeter every day it's, in a spiritual way. Uh, as we close off this morning, there is the men's breakfast coming up on September the 7th at 8 o'clock, and that's all I got for you today. But do uh, remember this uh, Bible reading plan if you want one. And if you need a Bible, contact the church office. We'll be more than glad to help you out. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for everybody here. Um, thank you for our walk with you. you. Just the fact that you would want to, you want to spend time with us and walk with us and dance with us. and You want to know us more, Lord. Help us to just open ourselves up to you. Maybe there's somebody here today that they're, they're feeling a little closed off and, and scared and there's that temptation to hide in the bushes. I pray that when we look at the face of Jesus, we would just come out, recognize that you're a merciful and compassionate God, and just walk beside you. Lord, thank you that you're a God who heals and cares for us and loves us and knows us each by name, the very number of hairs on our head. Lord, thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we try to follow. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm on my way to heaven, a 
Journey, it's sweeter every day. 